Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more Five Nights at Freddy's news. We got a whole bunch of topics to talk about for today, FNAF 8, or some of the games in the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative, and some potential info on the release date for Security Breach. But I'm gonna let you know right now, don't get your hopes up, okay? We'll talk about it a bit more when we get to the security breach uh, segment of the video. But of course, quickly, before we hop into the news, double check, make sure you're subscribed. I think it's like 30% of the people who watch me are subscribed, which means 70% of you all are watching and not subscribing, which is just, it makes my little heart sad. And speaking of my heart, FNAF 4 turned six years old today. That was so ominous. July 23rd, 2015, again, six years ago, FNAF 4 was released. It's insane how fast the time has gone by. All right, moving on to the actual news topic for today. Funko just decided to randomly release a Jumbo Lefty plushie out of nowhere. It's coming out in October, but you can pre-order it right now. It's exclusive to EB Games and GameStop. And it also looks a bit different from the regular Lefty plushie. It looks like the eyes don't pop out it looks like they're maybe sewn in or something i personally like it i already pre-ordered it it's 16 inches tall that's freaking huge kind of weird that they made this again it came out of nowhere and also lefty is kind of a strange character to make into a jumbo plushie i mean pizza sim came out what three four years ago or something but as we already know they have been going back to games you know fnaf 6 and uh fnaf 3 and make plushies of characters that they haven't before so maybe I don't know, hopefully we can see a new wave coming soon after the Curse of Dreadbear in October that has some more phantoms, maybe the withers, maybe some more toys. And speaking of plushies, we kind of have some strange news. It's not confirmation that we're going to get more Sanchi plushies, but they did reply to somebody on Twitter saying we're contractually not allowed to share what we're working on, but we know you all want some new plush and it's our job to try and do that. So again, not confirmation that we're going to get more Sanchi plushies for FNAF, but who knows? maybe we can see something new from them in the future. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that they got their FNAF license back and they have been re-releasing a lot of products. Right, the plushies, the badge, they all have been re-released, so hopefully new things coming soon. Moving on to the fan games section of the video, I want to start off by talking about fan games at Freddy's before we hop into the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. If you don't know what fan games at Freddy's is, it's basically a huge collection. Think of it like a Nintendo Direct or a State of Play, showing off new fan games coming from community members. They have a summer showcase arriving on August the 10th, and as you can see, they have a huge roster of games to show off. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with fan games at Freddy's, I'm going to leave their social link down below. I will be watching it live, and I will re-upload my reaction to it on this YouTube channel once I do that on August the 10th. Moving on now to the actual fan verse initiative games, we have updates on Pop Goes and Five Nights at Candy's 4, finally. So about two weeks ago, Kane Carter, the creator of Pop Goes Evergreen Release, released a huge freaking devlog detailing what just happened with the game because he made a whole lot of changes to a whole bunch of rooms. It's a pretty long devlog, but I'll quickly summarize it. Basically, they made the rooms on the cameras larger so that they will fit the actual, you know, size of the pizzeria and they'll align with what the rooms look like on the mini map. Here we can see the kitchen. As you can see, it's now a lot more open. And they also had a slight upgrade to the trading cards. Looking at the three versions side by side, you can barely tell the difference. So that's just a a quick overview again there's a lot more detail in the devlog itself so again it's linked down below and speaking of the pop goes evergreen cards a few people actually received in real life versions of the cards themselves that are going to appear in the game these first couple came from nova over on twitter they're going to be linked down below and it seems like everybody who received these cards get a total of four a card from Darko, one from pop goes and one from balloon boy and then they also get a special variant of a different character. For example, Nova got Scarecrow Stone the Crow. And another person named GG Games got Zombie Blake. These cords look so, so freaking good. And unfortunately, it seems like they are not going to be merchandise just yet. Hopefully, I don't know. Kane said that he did pitch the idea to Scott and that there is a demand for these cords. So, if you show enough support for them, 
maybe we can get them as official merchandise sometime in the future. Moving on now to Candies 4, and it's been a very, very long time since we heard anything from Emil Mako, the creator of FNAF 4 about the game. He posted a quick devlog because it is also the 6th anniversary the other day when he posted this of the original Five Nights at Candies. Why is everything turning so old? Gosh, I feel so old. Anyways, the devlog goes as followed. Update plus 6th anniversary of FNAF. Today marks 6 years since the first FNAF game released. All the way back in 2015. I never would have imagined that I'd still be working on this series to this day, let alone that people still remember these games. First of all, I want to apologize for the long silence. I haven't been able to really add anything that you could call an update in quite a while, both due to the lack of new work that has been done on FNAF 4, and because I dislike having to share more tidbits of information about the game as a punishment to myself for not having the game finished yet, ha ha. I really want everyone to go into the game as blind as possible when it comes out. Basically, there's been a ton of separate difficulties recently that have impacted me and my workflow. The most notable, of course, being pretty much all of 2020. Even though the Fazbear fanverse became a thing, which was and still is an incredible thing, I've struggled quite a bit with motivational issues on top of the usual bombardment of university work. Due to us students having to work from home, my university had to take quite a long time to adapt to this, which made project work and studying a long Lot tougher at least for me. Though I don't want this post to become an entire psychological evaluation, so I just want to state again that FNAF 4 is still happening even if it is taking longer to complete. I'm also working as hard as I can on the ports and updates for Five Nights at Candy's Remastered 2 and 3, so even if you don't hear from me, know that the wait will be worth it. It's nice to get an update on FNAF 4 and also Emil himself. I really hope that he's not stressing himself too much with all of this work. Of course, life issues get in the way of a lot of things unfortunately, so I really, 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 really do hope that Emil is doing well. And like you just said, even if it does take a long time for the game to come out, for us to get another update on the new game, it is nice to know that, you know, he's taking his time, making it as perfect as he can while also trying to, you know, deal with a lot of life issues. Uh, we got a few things to touch upon involving FNAF AO. It's gonna be quite silent for the game, at least for the next couple of months. I did make a whole video about it, so I'm not gonna go too in-depth, but basically Illumix made a whole post about updates coming to the game sometime this fall. A lot of bug fixes, a lot of new game modes, new characters, new animatronics, skins, all that good stuff. And in this silence, we're gonna get a lot of blasts from the past events. Right now, we are in the Freddy Festival event, as they're calling it, where you can get Black Eyes Frostbear, Shamrock Freddy, Golden Freddy, Woodland Toy Freddy, VR Toy Freddy, and also Freddy Frostbear. VR Toy Freddy just came into the game as of yesterday, and that is all the updates we have on FNAF AR right now. It's also worth pointing out that their merchandise store has been down officially for one full month. So, I don't know when we're gonna see that website go back up again, but... I guess we're just gonna have to keep waiting. All right, now let's talk about security breach because everybody's going bonkers that GameStop has a supposed release date for the Vigi game. I feel like I've talked about this before, so I don't know why I'm needing to talk about it again, but everybody's going, you know, sicko mode, mo bamba, saying, oh my gosh, it's coming out December the 27th. Can I just state how much I really dislike when people get all excited about release dates, even though Scott nor Sir Will have said anything about a release date and that they have specifically said that they're not going to keep putting out release dates because, well, everybody gets hyped up only for them to delay it again. Like, for the love of God, guys, this is literally a placeholder. We've had this exact same talk so many times in the past. In fact, guess what the release date for the game was all the way back last year in 2020? Oh, would you look at that? Release date December 27th, 2019. Hmm, it appears to be the exact same day, guys. I'm getting so sick and tired so fast of everybody hyping everybody up about the release date and not actually looking into the freaking research. Kane said that this has been up since May on the Irish GameStop, you know, site that this screenshot is from, which means that that was posted only a few weeks after Scott delayed the game back in April to later this year. And do you really think that they're gonna have an exact release date only a few weeks after delaying the game again? Like, I don't get it. I, 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 please, someone explain to me, why is everybody thinking that this is their release date? Why are people, you know, hyping each other up? This is literally a placeholder. We've had this placeholder for many months now. I just don't get it. So yeah, don't believe this December 27th freaking release date. It's literally a placeholder on GameStop website. They've done this so many times in the past. They have a release date for an upcoming game be at the very end of the year. It just so happens to be 
also the time where we could maybe speculate security breach releasing. I just don't get it. Whatever, let's move on to the final topic. So the final topic isn't really that interesting, but it is nice to know. For the first time since his retirement, since all the freaking drama, you know, all the political drama, Scott has made another comment on someone else's video, and it was a really nice video. It's Skylar Light's Thank You Scott video. It's 34 minutes, and it's just a collection of a bunch of people thanking Scott for what he's done over the past several years. And Scott left a comment saying, this is really amazing. I don't feel like I deserve this. Thank you to everyone who contributed to this. You've really, really made this all worthwhile. I'm not even sure what else to say. I really don't deserve this sort of thing. Thank you. A really sweet comment on a very sweet video. And that is all of the news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through all these years. I know it's a weird thing to say at the end of a random video, but thank you. If you enjoyed it, Maybe hit the like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Got a lot of videos coming out over the next couple of days. You want to subscribe to see those? That's going to be it. Thank you guys, and I'll see you on the flip side. Goodbye.